Uh, Major, Major Russ Conti from State Police. Um, I'm here representing the Department of Safety, and I've been uh, a member of the Division of State Police for 27 years, going on 28 years. Um, dear honorable members of the committee, this bill provides any person who possesses less than one ounce of marijuana should be guilty of a violation and subject to a fine up to $100. Currently, any amount of marijuana results in a Class A misdemeanor. To date, in 2011, the New Hampshire State Police Forensic Laboratory has received over 7,000 requests for controlled drug analysis. While the actual quantities of marijuana are not currently tracked, it is estimated that approximately two-thirds of these cases, less than 3,500, involve less than one ounce of marijuana. Those include loose vegetation, rolled cigarettes, food containing marijuana, partially burnt cigarettes, and smoking devices such as pipes or bombs. To date, the, le the forensic laboratory has received over 2,000 subpoenas for drug cases and approximately 75% of those, less than 1,500, involve less than one ounce of marijuana. This resulted in lab analysis analysts traveling to court over 100 times, expending hundreds of hours of waiting to testify, witnessing a plea bargain and arraignment upon arrival at court. The reason those statistics are in there um, ladies and gentlemen, just to show you the, the scope of what the problem is. We can all argue how much this costs to do, but the real reality is 7,000 requests. And I will also uh, remind you, those are the people that were caught. It's unclear if the laboratory testing would still be required for a violation <laughs> offense, or if, law or if a law enforcement officer would be required to be adequately trained as an expert to determine whether the green vegetative matter found during an investigative or traffic stop was in fact marijuana. This would perhaps require pocket scales of all law enforcement officers so they can ascertain the quality or quantity of marijuana for charging purposes. If laboratory testing will still be required, there will be no impact on the expenditures of a forensic laboratory. Since lab analysts would continue to test and testify in these cases, whether it's a violation case or a class A misdemeanor. And I will also remind you that uh, there is a many instances where law enforcement officers are categorized as experts for purposes of best evidence. In other words, there's not many law enforcement officers that come in and say, it looked like that, so I say it is because I received training. That's why lab personnel come in, and they're certainly bolstered by scientific instrumentation that allows them to, to not only through their observations, but through scientific results. It should be pointed out that one ounce of marijuana is 28.35 grams. The average hand-rolled marijuana cigarette analyzed at the forensic laboratory is less than 0.5 grams of marijuana. With the average count that a person could make over 50 hand-rolled cigarettes with one ounce of marijuana. The, cr the criminal downgrading of marijuana possession based upon the amount is not sound public policy and is definitely a threat to society. By somehow suggesting that a little marijuana in one's possession is less important than more than one ounce, the wrong message is being sent to society since it has been proven to, have, to be a problematic drug and a gateway drug. And we've heard testimony on both. This, the New Hampshire Department of Safety opposes the bills for all those reasons. Did you ever testimony, sir, if you have any? Uh, I did, sir. Yeah. I'll pass it around. Uh, all right. Any questions for the, for the lady? Okay. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, according to this, you have 2,000 subpoenas for drug cases. And uh, process 7,000 7, requests. 7,000 requests, which means there's probably a considerable amount more. My question is, how much does that cost to provide that service? Oh, it's a considerable sum, <coughs> sir. But I think that what I submit to you is not only does it outline what the problem is, is that if it's if it's brought to a violation level, I don't know if uh, if anybody's just going to concede to a police officer being able to, to issue you. Uh, whatever court action it is, just based on his knowledge. There's a lot of things that look like marijuana, I can tell you that. So what I'm going to tell you is that, unfortunately, I think this is still going to be an, an issue for the forensic lab. You're still going to have to have evidence, uh, scientific evidence, of what, of what the, the drug is, irregardless. So, uh, I, you know, there's a possibility that that 7,000 number increases. And the reason I say that is if it's decriminalized, people are probably going to figure out, nah, I can get in less trouble for this, so they'll carry it around more. So you can actually 
by decriminalizing this marijuana, you could increase those numbers, and the cost could be greater. I mean, we can't say, but if it's an evidence issue, you know you're going to get at least, you know, a, a substantial number each year that have to be analyzed. Wouldn't it be true, though, that if this were a violation, these people would only receive a ticket, and none of these cases would make it to be to, to the uh, drug analysis? Well, uh, if you're going to charge somebody with a violation, you still have to have evidence of wh what you're charging them for. So what I'm here to tell you is that's part of the problem. Is it going to be recognized that a law enforcement officer has the expert ability to say, this green vegetative matter that's loose in your pocket is marijuana, here's your ticket. Are they going to be able to do that, or are they going to have to take it? Are they going to have to take it, issue a ticket, and get it submitted to the lab? And then if, in fact, it is, follow through with it. I mean, that's the question. The question is whether or not they're going to be able to, to say absolutely positively, that's marijuana, here's your ticket. And frankly, if I was a young person, and we know there's a lot of things out there that look like marijuana that aren't, and you had something that wasn't marijuana, and an officer even gave you a $100 fine for it, are you just going to pay the fine? It's the equivalent of your, if your uh, motor vehicle violation happened and you didn't do it, you're probably going to want to come to court. You're probably going to want to say, hey, the system is, I get to say my piece. So I don't think, I don't think at all, in my experience, that it's going to be, you know, the fix that everybody's looking for, frankly. Um, I just don't think it is. Um, Major, we've heard the testimony here today that it's a uh, year in jail and a $2,000 fine with someone caught with marijuana. That, could you tell me how many of them cases are really Ma'am, I don't know of one case where somebody with a small amount of marijuana has done a year in jail and paid $2,000. And frankly, I think you've heard testimony, and, uh, and I, I, I appreciate everybody coming. And the norm is more of this. Most counties, if not every county, has a program to help young offenders. And frankly, the reason that they're helped is because they got there. They got into the program. And young people, as we know, have different ideas on stuff. And, and, and obviously, we were all young at one time, and you think differently. The realities of it is, is nobody, no law enforcement officer wants to ruin a kid's life because he has a small amount of marijuana or she does. That's not what we're about. Now, are we going to get? Are we going to take action? Yes, it's illegal. Is that action probably going to be an eye-opening experience for the person? Yes. But when it comes to a year in jail and two thousand dollars, you're talking probably about somebody that's selling it, that's not just carrying a small amount. And I can tell you that I've been on both sides of that. I worked in the drug unit. I worked undercover. I've I've done all sides of it. And I can tell you, even for sales of marijuana. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't each and every time you got a one to three in state prison. Many times there were lesser sentences and please work out. But I think, I think the people that have submitted the programs that are in the state and what the problems are, and I will attest to how it affects families. It affects families greatly. If you have a child that gets, that's involved in drugs, you're not going to condone it. Just like you wouldn't condone anything that's not good for their health, irregardless of it. But it does affect families. You can think about how that impacts people. You don't raise your children to do things that are illegal. It doesn't mean they can't make a mistake, and it doesn't mean that us as law enforcement officers in the state think that these kids should be hung up by their toes. We don't. But there has to be a mechanism to deal with it to hopefully help the decision-making process for young people. And if we remove that, you know, where are we? What, what, are, what, are, what else are we going to condone in society? It becomes a safety issue. One more thing I'll add is this, as far as deaths with marijuana, if I can just expound a little bit. Um, as far as smoking marijuana, I agree. I don't know of anybody that's died from just smoking marijuana, but I can tell you this, I've been to a few car accidents that were fatalities, more than a few, where the people were smoking marijuana. So you tell me whether it added to it or not, and those were deaths. So they didn't die from smoking marijuana, they died from being impaired from smoking marijuana. Following on uh, Representative Pamela Watkins' question and, and, and your response, if, if, the, if the law says it's a $2,000 fine and a year in jail, but that never happens, why wouldn't what happens actually be what we should have in statute? Because you want to leave, you, you do want to leave leeway for, for uh, just like any violation that's punishable up to $1,000. There should be leeway. There's different levels of it. If you have somebody that's come in on several violations, you may have a judge that said, you know what, 
usually the fine I would be around $250. This is egregious. Mr. Smith, I've seen you here three other times. You're going to pay $1,000. You're going to get into this program. It gives the judges some leeway. And I, I don't think that has to be changed. But I think, uh, I think the district courts, all courts in the state, recognize fully what they're dealing with when young people come in for, for drug use and small amount possession cases. I think they're well on board with it. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you, sir.